Hi everyone, welcome back to Venus on the Half Shell. This is Chef Gigi. Today I'm making a persimmon quick bread and I just wanted to talk very quickly about quick breads. Quick breads are um, used, are your zucchini breads, your pumpkin bread, uh, pumpkin muffins, um, you know, a lemon loaf type thing. Um, it's a, a general term used for basically muffins and a sweet breads that are not, you're not using yeast in them. Um, and so today I have persimmon. I had persimmons on the farm. I so brought them home. We had them frozen um, and I can take off the top. I did. And then I just mashed out the interior. This is a hachia um, persimmon. And forgive me if I'm mispronouncing anything. There's also fuyu persimmon, which is squatter. It's kind of flatter, and it lends itself to eating immediately, a bit more uh, quicker. Hachia persimmon is really good for baking. I've even seen it used in a risotto. Um, it has a jam-like consistency, and it's really delicious. It tastes a bit like apple or pear, um, and grown all over the world these days, um, temperate climates from fall into winter. Um, persimmons, there's, there's uh, writings about persimmons that were even used, you know, in centuries ago in Chinese. So they were cultivated first in China and then brought to Japan. So those are our persimmons. This is a cream style uh, method that all quick breads are a cream style method, that category of cake or bread making. And so that means that I have in this bowl, I have my fats, I have my butter, I have my sugar, I have, um, I, you can put your, um, you can put your, sorry, your um, cloves and ginger into the either the flour or the sugar at this point. I tend to put it into the sugar and butter. So I have my flavorings in with my sugar and butter. I have cloves, ginger, allspice, nutmeg, cardamom, and I have some vanilla in there. I could also, if I wanted to use a lemon zest, I would put it into this bowl as well. When you're doing the zest of a citrus, always use just the outside and not the white interior because that contains the oils. So then I'll beat it um, two to three minutes, scrape down the sides of the bowl well, and I'm gonna add my eggs in twos and threes and scrape down. I can then add my persimmon. I would also be able to use this recipe for uh, bananas. So I could do the, make a banana bread with just by substituting bananas or banana persimmon bread, of course. And lastly, I'll fold in my dry ingredients, which in this case is just flour and some baking soda. Um, generally, don't use too much baking powder in a quick bread because it will result in a dry, um, a, a more dry consistency. Um, a lot of oils are often used in quick breads as well. I have, I'm using butter, unsalted butter um, in this case, but um, I did a quick video on substituting oil. A lot of people like to use oil better, a neutral oil, because it does result in a quite a moist bread. And then lastly, I also just have um, around the house, I have some almond uh, streusel, not strudel, which I made the other day. It's S-T-R-E-U-S-E-L, and that's a mixture of oats, butter, brown sugar, some chopped almonds, and it's generally kept mise en place around uh, the kitchen as a topping. You can use it on your pastry, so it's going to, I'm going to put it on the top of the loaf before I bake. I bake quick breads at 325, just like a pound cake, to 350, depending. I personally like to bake them at 325 if I have the time. So it's going to take longer, but it's, it results in a really nice, tender crumb. Um, my mise en place, which I talked about earlier, includes preparation of the pans so that I don't have to go back. And um, it's not so important for a quick bread, but it's really... It's just because I, 
am trained to do it, I'm doing it. And so you guys can all train yourselves as well to get your mise en place ready because it's really going to help. Not so much for a persimmon quick bread because nothing will really deflate that much. But it's especially important if you're interested in the culinary arts for things like a souffle. Um, because by the time people are folding in the egg whites on a souffle or something more delicate, um, it's deflated and while they're preparing the pan. So you want to, again, mise en place means everything in its place. So get everything ready, read through the recipe. Lastly, I can add some nuts or even dried fruit um, to the mixture. I just happen to have some pistachios. I don't have a lot of other nuts around the house. And so I'll probably use those and maybe the muffins. And um, getting all the pans ready ahead of time as well enables me to make decisions of like maybe making one persimmon loaf plain, adding um, sifted cocoa powder to the next if I want to make chocolate persimmon bread. And then so it, it gives me adaptability and flexibility, which is really important within all arts as well as the culinary arts. So, um, yeah, I used to teach and like to say that we're really structured. It doesn't seem that at first when, when just watching a cooking video or something, but we're a really structured um, artistic discipline. And yet, because we've learned the basics, it's really important to do that. That's given us the flexibility to um, create anything from that platform. So anyway, I wish you guys all the best and I'm going to get to mixing the persimmon bread and thank you all for your support and have a great evening. Ciao, bye bye and thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Bye, thank you.